Now it's funny that the Orion's over here, but the Orion Nebula is over here. Ah. Construction complete. Ah, Martian. De okay, so that's what funding it more does. It it just gets us to pop up again. Okay. Best in defense. Sabotage attempt prevented. <clears throat> our intelligence agencies have successfully foiled an attempt by the Romulan Star Empire to destroy one of our military assets through sabotage. While the attempt nearly succeeded, the agent involved left key evidence of his involvement in the targeted starship's computer network. Prime Minister Jonathan Archer Jonathan Archer is the Prime Minister. Has condemned the Romulan government for their interference. Wait, am I thinking of the right right one? Yeah, cause he was, yeah, yeah, because he was on here before, so. Former captain of the USS Enterprise is now Prime Minister. While in the vicinity of Tethel 1, Captain John Ward turns to the science officer and asks for his opinion about the origins of the vessel they are approaching fast. The science officer replies that the vessel's origin is unknown, nothing that could hardly be an Earthship. The communication officer announces that she is receiving a signal. An old Morse code call from Captain John Ward turns to the science officer and comments about I think they forgot a period there. John Ward turns to the... Th so it's an old Morse code call si signal. Period. Captain John Ward turns to the science officer and comments about the ship not possibly being an Earth vessel. The ship appears on screen and the captain states that it is an old DUI 500 class ship. The science officer postulates to the captain suggesting it might be an older DUI 100 ship. The last such vessel built was centuries ago, in the 1990s. <laughs> huh. That didn't sound right. Captain John Ward was... has the ship go to full alert, not wanting to be caught off guard in the derelict vessel being used by aliens. Come alongside the vessel. Captain's Log, Supplemental. A full hour has elapsed since interception of the strange vessel. Our presence alongside is still being completely ignored, although our sensors continue to show signs of equipment and life aboard. There has been no indication of danger to us. The captain announces on the ship intercom for weapons de department to maintain battle stations. All of the decks stand by alert. Medical officer arrives on the bridge and informs the captain that he is picking up some form of heartbeat over there. Very faint and very slow, coming from 60 to 70 bodies. The science officer informs the captain that the whole of the vessel is pitted with meteor scars, but still intact. That he can make out a name SS Botany. SS Botany Bay. An argument ensues between the medical officers, between the medical officer and the science officer, about the eugenics wars and humankind's attempt to improve the human race through selective breeding. Finally, Captain John Ward gets the two to stop arguing. It has the Enterprise rig for tractor beam, bring the USS Botany Bay along. Bridge yours, number one. As the away team rematerializes, they discover that they are amongst numerous stasis chambers with humans from the 20th century asleep in them. Lieutenant McGivers is in awe that this is a sleeper ship. Captain, it's a sleeper ship! Suspended animation? The medical officer begins to examine the bodies inside the compartments and determines that they are in decent shape for being in suspended animation for over two centuries. The medical officer's tricorder alerts him to a compartment being a beginning to awaken the occupant. 
We've triggered something, all right. Heartbeat is increasing. Now passing eight beats per minute. There are some signs of respiration beginning. We must save him. <clears throat> Captain's log, supplemental. Alongside the US, alongside the SS Botany Bay for ten hours now. A boarding party of engineering and medical specialists are now completing their examination of the mysterious vessel. Attempts to revive the other sleepers await our success or failure, with the casualties already beamed over. The medical officer is frankly amazed at his physical and recuperative power. The captain and the science officer are on the main bridge and open a communication line to the SS Botany Bay. After getting a... That's my place. After getting a brief update on the status of the sleepers, out of 84 units, only 12 have malfunctioned. Of the 72 that remain, 30 of them are women. Captain John Ward turns to the science officer and discusses the next course of action. The science officer is concerned about the strange and violent period that was the 1990s. Even after exhausting research of the period through the Enterprise's library computer, Captain tries to quell the science officer's concerns and decides to set a course for Starbase 12. Boy, did the 90s not go how Star Trek thought it would. <laughs> Fairly uneventful, actually. Positive, even, when you consider that the Soviet Union fell. Ah, oh, there's more. I don't want to read anymore. Captain John Ward heads to medical to talk with a person from the SS Botany Bay. Upon entering medical... Medical, he consults with the chief medical officer, and then begins to talk with the mysterious man. After pleasantries are exchanged, the mysterious man only gives one name. Khan. Oh. Okay, it's that. I know exactly what, what event this is now. <laughs> I know what event this is. A short question period follows, and Khan indicates that he has fired Khan. He is fired, or tired, not fired. Khan requests something to read during his convalescence, and Captain John Ward agrees, commenting that he has 200 years of catching up to do. Captain John Ward bids Khan farewell and leaves. The next day, Khan is invited to dinner with the senior staff. Captain and senior staff are in dress uniforms and begin to seat themselves around the dinner table. As the dinner finishes, the first officer turns to Khan and begins to engage him in a bit of lively discussion. As the conversation continues, Khan turns to the captain and states that he is an excellent tactician, letting his first officer attack him while he sits back and looks for weakness. After John Ward rebuts Khan's claims. That's rude. Oh lord. The next morning, Captain John Ward, the first officer, the chief medical officer, and the chief engineer all sit in the briefing room and discuss the events that have transpired thus far. The officer pulls up a data file that shows Khan as we have seen, and a separate file from 1992 that shows the same man, named Khan Nunyan Sin, ruler of a quarter of Earth, from Asia through the Middle East. The chief engineer quips in that he always had a sneaking admiration for Khan. A deep discussion ensues about the merits of Khan and his rule on Earth. Finally, Captain John Ward has enough and intervenes in the discussion and remarks while, while they might admire him and be against him at the same time. The first officer replies, illogical. Captain John Ward orders security to place Khan under lockdown and then heads to confront Khan. Khan sits dressed in a red enterprise. And in a red enterprise. Khan sits dressed in a red enterprise and talks to the captain. Khan remarks, I'm sorry, Captain. I was lost in thought. My door locked from outside. A guard posted. Captain John Ward replies, Unusual treatment for Khan Union Sin. 
captain and Khan exchange words, and after Khan gives an answer that Captain John Ward was looking for, he leaves. Khan, upset at this turn of events, begins his unfurl begins his unfurl his plan and goes to see Lieutenant McGivers. With their help, he takes control of engineering and cuts power to life support and locks down the turbo lifts to the bridge. Khan contacts the bridge and demands the captain surrenders his ship to Khan. God damn it. My ship! Khan is enraged by his confinement and quickly begins to plot a plan to gain control of the Enterprise. Requesting the presence of Lieutenant McGivers, he appears to have seduced her. And with her help, he is soon able to escape confinement and take control of the engineering deck, after having awakened a number of the Botany Bay sleepers. There, he cuts power to the life support system and locks down the turbo lifts and bulkhead throughout the ship. On Tong There's too much reading! Ugh. Khan contacts the bridge and demands the captain surrenders his ship to Khan. I'm sorry, but I don't negotiate with terrorists. The air on the bridge is thin, and the last bit of air in the room, Captain John Ward... Captain John Ward begins to record a message to start the command. They have my ship, discarding their own worthless vessel. Only moments of air left on the bridge now. Commendations recommended for communications officer, technicians first class Thule and Harrison, Lieutenant Spinal, and of course the science officer. I take full responsibility. I take full Captain passes out mid sentence. Senior staff are awoke again, and listening to a speech at gunpoint. Khan tells the senior staff that it is pointless to resist him, that they should join him. When none do so, he turns on the view screen the medical decompression chamber. Inside is Captain John Ward, gasping for air. Khan offers a choice. Join him, he will spare the Khan's life. Lieutenant McGivers asks to be excused. Khan agrees and she leaves. Khan turns his attention back to the view screen and watches the pressure gauge drop. Then the view screen cuts out. What happened? Ugh, that's getting dry. I'm out of liquid refreshment! Ugh. After this event here, I think I'm gonna take a break. Lieutenant McGivers is in medical, at the decompression chamber. Tells the life tells the guard there to watch the captain very closely to see if he may cooperate. As the, as the guard turns, she injects him with a strong sedative, incapacitating him. She frees the captain and pleads for him to spare Khan. With the help of the first officer and the lieutenant, they are able to incapacitate the rest of the ship, except for Khan. Khan escapes the engineer to engineering and seals it off from environmental controls, and begins to overload the warp core. Captain John Ward heads to engineering to stop the ship from destroying itself. As the captain enters engineering, Khan attacks him. A struggle ensues, with Khan gaining the upper hand time and time again. In desperation, Captain John Ward grabs a piece of piping and beats Khan into unconsciousness and stops the ship from overloading. Captain's Log Supplemental Control of the Enterprise has been regained. Now what to do with Khan and his people? They are a threat to the Federation, but they can also be beneficial in leading with dealing with the Klingons. I haven't had much dealing with the Klingons yet. There's a few empires separating us at the moment. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's attempt to recruit him. Captain's Log Supplemental. Khan has refused my offer to join the United Federation of Planets. What a waste. Could have had an opportunity to help build a brighter future. And what do I do about McGivers? The court-martial is convened and the senior staff are in full dress uniform. 
seated around the table. Khan and Lieutenant McGivers are brought in. This hearing is now in session. Under the authority vested in me by command, I declare all charges and specifications in this matter have been dropped. The medical officer asks a question, but is interrupted by the captain. Number one, our heading takes us near the steady Alpha Star system. Quite correct, Captain. Planet number five there is habitable, although a bit savage. Somewhat inhospitable. But no more the Australia's Botany Bay colony was at the beginning. Those men went on to tame a continent, Mr. C Mr. Khan, can you tame a world? Khan replies, Have you ever wear Red Milton, Captain? Yes, I understand. Lieutenant Marlin McGivers, given a choice of court-martial or occupying them, or, or accompanying them, there, what did you choose? I'll go with him, sir. This hearing is closed. Khan and Lieutenant McGivers are escorted out, and the science officer turns to Captain John Ward and states, It is interesting that you have allowed such a man to be free in the United Federation of Planets. Time will tell if your choice was sound. Acknowledge. Is it over? Oh fuck, I think it's over. Okay. My throat is dry from all that fucking reading, and my drink is empty. So I'm gonna take a break here. I will see you all next time.